Good afternoon, everyone. This is the doctor. It is 6.41 p.m. here in the Pacific Northwest. We are just getting ready to stream here in a little bit, and I finally finished putting together this giant multi-slide presentation for you guys. Now, for my War of the Visions fans out there, I know that you're just like dripping at the mouth, salivating, ready for this. We are going to be covering every single weapon except for normal weapons and TMRs that are currently out in Global. So any of you that have had weapon confusion on what weapon to pursue, on what build to use on your characters, on what you want to equip, this is where we're going to solve that. And we're going to talk about some of the difficulties in finding out which weapon to use right now. Because to be honest with you guys, the stats are confusing out there. And you'll go on one web page and see one thing, and then you'll go on another web page and see another thing. The wikis aren't fully updated, or the wikis are updated with wrong information. So what I pulled here is all of the information I could pull from either in my own crafting inventory or from the different wikis that do have verifiable information. So I did find Altima was the most accurate wiki. I did find the global wiki was hit or miss or didn't have all information or didn't even have pictures for some of the weapons. However, I did find that the global wiki did have the proper names for some of the weapons because there's some of the weapons that are translated differently from the Japanese version to the global version and we'll talk about those when we get to them as well. So the first weapon of course we're going to be talking about is Great Sword and Staff. Golden Blade we just had a great farming event for. Base stats Assault plus 226 if you get Assault. It's an easy farm. It's a wonderful farm. If you don't have Golden Blade though if you're coming to this video just a little bit late we do have Mithril Blade and Claymore and shout out for Mithril Blade because it's going to have a base stat of accuracy plus 8, which may be relevant in the near future. And it does have a crit with a, a crit type that is associated with it, and it gives critical plus 10. So not every single weapon has a crit type or an assault type. They kind of vary in how many types they get. Golden Blade does not have a crit type. So Mithril Blade is going to be your next best bet for a crit build. If you're doing something like a crit build for Stern, for example, you're actually probably going to want to max out a Mithril Blade. If you're a new to play player, if you're brand new, free to play, you might want to max out your Claymore to begin with. It's pretty easy. As an Assault, it has an attack of 146. That's going to make you very comparable to the Golden Blade. I know you're like, but there's a difference of 60 attack. But you have to remember that so many people have their Golden Blades at like plus 3 or plus 4. And even at Max Awakening, they only have 156 attack or it's not fully optimized for them. So it is an easy way for you to catch up if you're able to optimize your Claymore. Jumping over to staffs, we have Stages staff here, and this is one of those pieces of equipment that has limited information out there on it. And when I went to the website, these were the stats I pulled. Magic 116, Attack 10, HP 108, Critter Hit plus 2. But they didn't tell me if this was the initial or the final stats, and it would seem weird to me that the UR staff that you grind from PvP has a Magic of 116 when the Healing staff with a Magic build has a Magic of 116. So something a little interesting there. I'm not sure if maybe the wikis don't have the updated final stats on the Sage's staff. If there's anyone out there that can verify that, that would be great. Either way, you get the Sage's staff from the PvP grind. It is the only UR weapon besides Excalibur right now in the global release, besides TMRs. Other than that, we have Platinum Rod. So Platinum Rod gives the magic plus 162. I definitely see most of the Medinas out there focusing on getting this Platinum Rod right here. If you're looking for a little bit of survivability, it does have evasion plus five or accuracy plus five if you don't happen to pull the magic based platinum rod, for example. Healing staff, something you can buy in the shop. This is the one I would recommend for any beginners out there. I would definitely focus on awakening it to three because you do unlock a cure spell. It's max magic caps at 116, which is pretty reasonable actually. And you're gonna find it's gonna be better than the staff or the iron rod. Not to downplay the Iron Rod at all, but it does have some weird stats on it. If you look at it, it seems very attack focused. It just doesn't seem to be the most magic focused staff out there. And I have questions about the design around it. So I would definitely pursue either the, I would jump from the normal staff and then jump right into the healing staff if I were you guys out there. Looking into axes and claws, we have the golden axe. With the crit golden axe, it's a critical hit of plus 18. With the assault golden axe, it's an attack of 212. If you're going for the golden axe or if you're going for an axe in general, you're probably have using Yerma or you're probably watching the video far into the future. 
If you're farming for Yerma, you are going to want to make sure you get a critical axe because Yerma is very critical hit focused. Ogre Killer and Mithra Axe seem to carry this trend I was noticing as I was researching all of the equipment. There are some times where Mithril, Mithril weapons have different stats and different awakenings than the regular rare weapons. And there are other times where the Mithril weapons just seem directly superior to the rare weapons. And in the case of the Axe, it seems like the Mithril Axe is just directly superior to the Ogre Axe. And from all the information I could find, it seemed like the only thing you would want to do is just jump from straight to uh, Mithril Axe from your normal Axe. Now for Claws, this is, this is where we start getting to some of the really interesting weapons. Cat Claws here with a base of Agility 5 and Evasion 5. Beautiful stats, right? With an Assault type, it's going to have 117 attack. And it's a little bit interesting because you do see that Mithril Claws down here has a base of Agility plus 5 as well, which is incredible. It also has Accuracy plus 5, not Evasion plus 5. And essentially it's mirroring that same Mithril and uh, Iron Tear we see in the Axes, where the only drawback really from the Mithril Claws is that it just has lower base stats and it doesn't have that Evasion plus 5. Now, that being said, Evasion plus 5 is a big deal, but there could be a world where that Accuracy plus 5 is more valuable for you. So if you're someone out there who doesn't have access to the Cat Claws because you missed the event, don't worry, farm the Mithril Claws, go after it. You're not gonna be that far behind using the Mithril Claws from using the Cat Claws. Iron Gloves, there's no reason to use these suckers. Low base stats, there is no agility on them. The crit and attack is nothing really in comparison to the Mithril Gloves or the Cat Claws. Even if you were wearing bare naked Mithril Claws, awakened to level 10, they're probably gonna be better than the Iron Gloves just because of the agility plus and the accuracy plus. So. I wouldn't even bother with a normal weapon with a hand-to-hand -hand user if I could. I would go right to Mithril Claws if I were you. If I had known this when I started using my Ziza, I would have slapped my noob self back then because I should have realized that Mithril Claws were so much better. All right, now we're really getting into it, you guys. Swords and daggers. So from the current tactics event right now, there is the Nag Rock, and that is a MR sword that is gonna be farmable when the EX Final Fantasy Tactics event comes out. I would not buy the recipes from the shop right now, in case any of you out there are thinking that's a good idea. As its assault, it has 162, which is wonderful. As its magic, it has 112. And then overall at its base stats, it has an evasion plus two and an accuracy plus one. So it is that sword that has really good attack with a balance of magic, right? So if you're thinking about Ramza, you're thinking about Nagarok, you're thinking about balancing that attack and that magic, it's really the Ramza sword. And you're gonna see a lot of people talk about how Nagarok is really good and you should farm it, and I think they're right. I think if you're wanting a good middle of the road overall sword to use into the future that's not specialized, Nagarok is really gonna be the way to go. Sleep Sword has end sleep on it, right? So whenever it hits anyone, it has a chance to put them to sleep. Has a magic of 126, which is gonna be the highest magic of all the swords that we're seeing here. So again, those of you who are building a magic-based Ramza, you might wanna to switch to the sleep sword right now. It also has a base of accuracy plus four and critical hit plus three. Lionheart was a limited time weapon as well. Its assault has attack of 168, which puts it at the highest of the swords here in this category. The aim also has an accuracy of 17. For some reason, all the websites seem to recommend the aim. I would focus on the assault if I had this, if I were you guys. Finally, we are gonna see our first specialized elemental weapon, and that's gonna be Ice Brand. So Ice Brand is gonna have plus five ice attack, and when it's fully maxed out in its plus five form, it's gonna have ice attack plus 30. The assault version is gonna have attack plus 118. And the critical version is going to have critical hit plus eight. Now, of course, the first unit you think of with this is Gilgamesh. If you have a Gilgamesh, you should be using this Ice Brand. Agrius coming up in the future. Ice Brand is going to be the weapon you're going to want to use with her. And then, of course, I can never remember her name, but the new Ice Paladin that we got, she could use this as well, and it will modify her attack pretty well. So just some perspective, that Ice Attack plus 30 does give a 30% bonus damage modifier to all ice attacks so it is extremely powerful for those of you that pre-registered we do have excalibur which is an attack plus 120 critical plus 9 accuracy plus 24 
And you know, this is actually an incredibly powerful sword. When you look at it, it, it has that balance of attack and accuracy that is going to be in the meta forever. We are going to see this weapon. It's going to be around for a long time. Don't think we're going to be not seeing it anytime soon. The Mithril Sword has a base of critical plus five and accuracy plus three. And then I crafted probably about 10 different Mithril Swords on my account. And the only type that I got was Assault. So I got, it has a max of attack plus 132. I didn't find any other information on the crit or anything like that, but it is potentially the highest critical sword out there if you can get a crit build with the mithril. So again, I could not find that information, but that may be out there somewhere. If any of you guys have a crit based mithril sword, go ahead and drop it in the comments. We would be interested to know that. And now we got the long sword. None of y'all are gonna be using the long sword. <laughs> you get a free ice brand no matter what. There's always an event sword to be farmed right now. If you pre-register to get Excalibur, just jump to your Mithril Sword if this is in the future. I would skip the Long Sword, just level up the normal weapon, and then jump to the SR or the SSR whenever you get the chance. Now, daggers. I I actually was a little surprised by daggers. I thought there would be more, more dagger focus, more evasion focus. They're actually very crit focused, which I mean makes sense, right? So the Mage Master at the top here gives, with the critical build, critical hit plus 17%. Very beautiful. And amazingly, it gives more attack than the swords in its assault form. It does have attack plus 186 in its assault form. And it does have a base of four critical hits. So overall, pretty powerful. Mithril Dagger and Dagger were two other weapons that I could not find specific stats on. Judging from their base stats, though, I'm going to say that Mithril Daggle, Dagger Daggle. <laughs> Mithril Dagger has that critical focus and that accuracy focus, and then Regular Dagger has that aim focus and that crit focus as well. So there's really no reason why you shouldn't just jump right up to Mithril Dagger here. I think maybe if you want to max out the Regular Dagger, that'll be pretty easy for you. But again, you do have access to that Normal Dagger, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether the investment into the Rare Dagger would be worth it for you guys or not. All right, you guys, getting into Great Katana and Katana, and this is the first place where we start seeing the translations between JP and English get all messed up. So, especially for the Great Katanas, I put both of their names here, both the global and the JP name, because they have different names, and they're even categorized as sword on Altima. So it's very interesting. Um, <laughs> for the Osafune, as it's known, the SSR, its assault form is going to have 168 attack, with an accuracy of plus three. And then the base form on this weapon has agility minus three and crit minus six. And then the crit form of this weapon has critical plus 25% and hit plus 11. Now the Kiku Ichimonji has a base of agility minus three, and that actually starts at agility minus five. So you are gonna have to use your agility hammers on all of these great katanas. The Assault is going to have Attack plus 145, and the Dodge is going to be plus 10 Evasion. So, depending on which base form you want to go with, these I am a Katana, a great Katana user because I do use Sir O. A lot of these stats came directly from my weapon that I'm using. I'm currently using a Assault Kiki Ichimonji on my Sir O right now, and I can say I've been very happy with it. The Agility minus is terrible, but... Man, I can't, I can't do, I had to use my hammers on it to raise that up. There's really no other option if you're a great Katana user. Finally, we have the Kotetsu, which is a base agility minus four, which starts at agility minus six. The critical build on it is critical plus 11, and the assault is attack plus 129 and crit plus two. And I'm gonna be honest with you, the agility minus six was so painful for me. I had those agility hammers, so I just went directly to the Kiku Ichimonji instead of even going for the normal Great Katana or the Kotetsu. I just bought the Kiku Ichimonji and I put it on and I use those agility hammers and that's what I've been using ever since. Uh, shout out for the Osafune too. I think I mistyped this here. I don't think the base is crit minus six. I believe it's probably evasion minus six. So something to keep in mind there. For the Katana, the Sazuke Sword was a farmable event weapon. It is very powerful with an assault type of attack plus 207 and critical hit plus five. The critical has plus 25% critical hit and then attack plus 165. So if you were lucky enough to get the Sazuke Sword, having it as a critical or an assault, you could probably not go wrong either way. I'm a fan of the critical 
And I know that for Shadow Links, you do want to aim a little bit towards the crit build if you can. So pretty awesome there. The Kodachi Assault has attack plus 178. Again, that's really reasonable. And then the Kunai has attack plus 103 and then accuracy plus 18. And shout out for the Kodachi. I crafted a lot of Kodachis trying to find the different types that you could get. I only got Assault when I crafted my different Kodachis. So I did only put the Assault there. I have a feeling it would probably have Evasion or Accuracy on it as well. Now we're getting into the fun stuff, bow and gun. The Raz Elgethi, it is the only gun with a base of agility minus three. However, it makes up for that by having a very powerful attack. So in its assault form, it has plus 207 attack. In its critical form, it has plus 13 critical hit rate. And in its aim form, it has accuracy plus 10. The Vega has no agility penalty. Its assault form has attack plus 149, and its aim form has plus 22. And then the Capella has no agility negative and is a solid baseline. Overall, though, I would say if you missed out on the Raz Algethi event or you don't want to be buying the Raz Algethi recipes for 1.25 mil in the shop, go for a Vega. I would personally recommend the assault, but I think in the future we're probably going to see evasion becoming more prevalent. I might actually aim for an aim with that aim plus 22. That seems to be what's recommended on all of the wikis. But again, that could change in the future. The meta is going to be constantly shifting, I'm sure. So again, if you don't want to spend a lot, if you want a decent mid-range powerful gun, I would go for the Vega. Now bows, out of all the weapons, all the weapons, you guys, bows and maces were the two that I had the hardest finding information on. I scoured my Discord, I crafted them myself. So what I just did is for the rune bow, I'm gonna assume that it's higher accuracy, higher crit, and higher evasion than the great bow and the long bow. I do have a great bow, so in its assault form, it's 139 attack, accuracy plus three, evasion plus one, and crit plus three. And for long bows, what I was getting mostly was assaults when I was crafting them, so I had attack plus 99. Again, your results might vary here. I think it's one of those things that there's not much information out there because there's not a lot of bow users. Not a lot of people are out there using bows right now. So I think it's going to be the same when I point out here when we start talking about maces for our last weapon. I think so many people don't use the maces that there's almost no information out there on it. Let's talk about spears, though. The Drake's Horn Spear. You need to go farm this thing right now if you don't have it already. In its critical hit form, it gives plus 28 critical. I am pretty sure this is the highest critical weapon in the entire game right now. And I also believe that it gives Dragon Killer. Now imagine that with a spear user using Nighthawk, that's going to decimate. So I would recommend farming this right now. Even if you don't have a spear user, it's something important you should probably have. You never know when a spear user is going to drop out of the sky or when you're going to pull, you know, 10 Sir Elds. <laughs> Mithril Spear is going to be more accuracy focused and it has higher base stats than the Partisan. However, the Partisan, when I was crafting 20 million of them, the Partisan actually has a critical form. And I could not find that with the Mithril Spear. So if you're going for a crit build early, you may want to focus on a Partisan than a Mithril Spear. It's one of those rare situations where the rare might balance out with the SR and you may actually want to be using a Partisan. And of course, we have the other MR Spear the Ice Lance. And this weapon was designed for one person only, and that person is Serge, Serge. And it cannot come up with Ice Attack plus 30. So, I mean, if you're using Serge, this is a pretty good damn weapon. And you know, I'm actually, I have experimented with Serge in the past, and he is someone who I've actually limit broken and awakened. So he might be someone you guys see in a future, a future build video using his Ice Lance on the modifiers for his damage. Now, finally, we come to the maces, and this is similar to the axes, I think, except I think this is even worse. It's just platinum, mithril, and iron, and I'm pretty sure they're all just better versions of each other. The only thing that seemed a little weird when I was looking up the stats is that mithril maces seem to have a higher attack, and platinum maces seem to have a higher magic. That seemed a little bit weird to me. I... I feel like there's so few people that use maces in this game that nobody 
has researched this information or really cares about this information. So what I'm going to ask from you guys out there is if you're using the mace weapons, please put this down in the comment section and please post what your mace stats type is and what your mace's stats are so that I can catalog that information and we can either contribute it to the wiki or we can compile it here or somewhere. So if you guys are wondering where these stats are, I would look down to the comment section. We are a community here and there are many people in the comments who know much more than I do, but I would like to think I know at least a little bit. So thank you so much for listening, you guys. I think this is probably my longest video that I've ever made, and I hope you guys like this type of content. I am going to be releasing a video like this on armor and accessories tomorrow, and I think that's that's about it for this video. Holy cow. All right, you guys. Well, have a good day. We will be streaming here soon, and I look forward to seeing you guys there. Thank you. Bye-bye.